You may remember from a couple of weeks ago that I was in Italy visiting the MV Augusta factory, but while I was there, I also got the chance to ride a few of the new range of bimotors. And while I was at the Italian track, I bumped into a certain young man from the world of superbikes, and he's riding for bimotor, and he has an interesting story to tell. So, Chris, first of all, congratulations on what appears to be a, a pretty good season for you. Does it feel like that from the inside? You know what races are like, you always have high expectations. Yeah, you always want a lot, and... Uh... It doesn't matter what expectations you start the season with, whenever you reach those goals earlier or whatever, then you, you move on to the next thing, so it's like that in racing. But yeah, everything so far is going pretty amazing. Kind of a shame that you can't score any points yet. It is a shame, but um, at the same time, to be honest with you, when you're on track, it actually doesn't even come into your head. It's, uh, it's kind of weird. It takes, you know, sometimes you come back, you come back and you get the results list and we're not, you know, we're, we're disqualified or whatever yeah. they call it, and, uh, or subject to homologation, and uh, you go, Hmm. You know, it's a bit strange. You look yeah, at your name yeah. and you're not there, but no, when you're on track, actually, it doesn't doesn't make any difference to me. So, um, yeah. Moving to the Bimota team, obviously a fantastic opportunity, but very much untested and untried waters, you know? I mean, where have Bimota been, with all due respect? They're coming straight in at the deep end. I mean, was that a gamble on your part? It was a gamble in some respects. Um, I had chances to ride with other teams but obviously and and with proven bikes um, but to come with Al Stars obviously something that's you know I started racing road racing four years ago if you told me that it, within this period of time that I'd be racing for you know with Francis Batter's Al Star team you'd know, <laughs> be like no chance um, and then yeah the Bimota thing obviously sort of we looked into it and to be honest with you I wasn't really that worried because the engine is a proven thing you know so that's okay we know it's gonna go and Bimota is essentially a chassis manufacturer so they know how, they know what they're doing obviously we hadn't tested before the start of the season and everything so you never know exactly um, but from the first the first time we rode the bike we actually went to Portimao in horrible wet conditions and just basically we only got to ride around but from the first the first run it went around the track and to be honest with you for a brand new bike that's something that's it's not unheard of, you know, it's pretty rare. You know, even the, the best jack bikes and everything, they have a lot of teething problems and everything like that. And to be honest with you, we just went out and did laps and... It's a, it's a development year. We hear this on the commentators all the time. It's development, it's development. I mean, explain to our viewers, what what is what do they mean when they say development? <laughs> I mean, you're just riding the thing flat out every time you get on it and, what, asking for things to be improved to make you feel better on it or something? Yeah, actually, in the, at the moment, we're in a bit of a, a strange situation because the rules state that we can't go testing the bike outside of race times. So we're testing during a race. Now the problem with that is obviously the competitive side kicks in. There is a difference between testing and racing and the way that you approach the weekend or the, the way that you approach the track time because testing, to be honest with you, we can go out and you know, you'll go three or four seconds a lap slower, you can do, and you can, you can work through a, a number of different things that you want to work through. What we've got at the moment is we'll start to work through a few things and then all of a sudden you've got to set a lap time because it's qualifying ready to get into Super Bowl or then it's Super Bowl or then you're in the race. So it's at the moment we're in a bit of a halfway house. Um, so for the first sort of three rounds that we did, we had a few problems with the electronic system, which is just a standard BMW system, but just to make it work properly on the Bimota was something that we had to get, on the race bike anyway, was something that we had to make it work because it wasn't working. So we didn't actually touch anything with the chassis. I mean, nothing. Uh, we rode it pretty much as it, as it comes out of the showroom, which is testament, I think, to the bike yeah. itself um, because we were still getting some pretty handy results. Uh, the electronic side is sort of, we've got around it in terms of that it, it works okay, that it'll run now properly uh, and consistently and how we want it to. Um, so now we're starting to work around a few little things on the chassis. But what, with testing, at the moment we're at the very, sort of, we're still at the infancy stages. So what it'd be nicer to do, which is what we're struggling to do, is obviously at the moment we're working around small parameters because we're testing at a racetrack. So you don't want to go too far away from what you're doing. Yeah. Essentially, what we'd like to do is go to some circuits and go massively different in one direction. So make the bike really tall, make the bike really small, make it really short, make it really long. Just te te test all the maximum parameters and then that's more what 
we want to be doing development wise then we can find a real direction at the moment we're still working in quite a small area just so that we can still be competitive you seem like a confident happy at ease young fella it, it, you must be feeling good about next year then we really are putting yourselves yeah. in it because the, the, the rules will be all the bikes will be an Evo type of bike which is exactly what you're on yeah. So you're learning tracks and preparing the bike. I mean, I get the sense from the team and the people involved at Bermota that there really is a, you know, it's a possibility. One of you chaps might be world champion next year. I honestly believe that our bike and our setup is capable of winning the world championship. I don't ever like to say stuff about my own riding because I've got, I have very high expectations for myself, but I don't, like, I prefer to sure. sort of talk on the racetrack, so. Yeah. Um, but you're in it to win it, as they say. That's why you're absolutely, there. You're a professional. Absolutely. And, you know, we can, we can only take into account what we, the information that we've got at the moment. The information that we've got at the moment is that we're running EVO rules. Within the EVO rules, we're running towards the front. And we're not going against people who aren't very fast. You know, we're going against Canaper on a very good Ducati. We're going against David Salom on a very good Kawasaki. We're going against Leon Camier on a very good BMW. And we're there. And we're there after five races so it bodes well now you don't want to get too ahead of yourself because that can also lead to complacency and there's no way that I want to allow any, any of that to come in there's a name that keeps pop, popping up hidden I was it, it's uh, you're a new you're not a you're not new to racing but I mean you said something which our viewers will probably have caught on you've been road racing for four years I mean how does that work give us a little bit of background because you are in fact a world champion ex-champion brother. yeah no I, I won the I mean, I, used to, I came from motocross background, was essentially where I started out. Um, did that for a number of years. Then I went and did supermoto, which, to be honest with you, supermoto was, it was only a stop off. I couldn't afford to go road racing. So we were like, what can we do to try and get some practice on tarmac? Oh, we'll go supermoto racing, which at the time was coming pretty popular, very popular actually. And um, yeah, started out doing supermoto just to get some experience. And it was like, oh, I'm pretty quick at this, you know. <laughs> Then it became a, a job, you know, and you're like, you're getting paid to go and ride around yeah. in circles. It's like, oh, this is pretty good, you know. <laughs> so it sort of, the road racing got put to one side for a bit. And then uh, it got to the point where it was like, right, if, if I'm going to do it, it's going to have to be sort of now sort of thing. Um, so rightly or wrongly, I left a, a nice, easy job, if you can call it a job, but, you know, a nice, easy life of getting paid to go and ride bikes. And I decided to invest a lot of that and then luckily I had a lot of sponsors as well to help bridge the rest of the gap and we decided to go road racing so that was always the plan just it it got delayed a little bit because of but no the, the progression's been you know the progression through the ranks of where we're now into world superbikes is you know it's I'm, rapid yeah and I'm and I, like I said before to if you would have said that I'd be with with Alstar then well, I tell you what, I can definitely tell you you're unwittingly or unknowingly building a bit of a fan base in South Africa, and we very much look forward to seeing you out there later in the year. Yeah, thank thanks. you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Chris. Cheers. He comes across as a really, really nice guy, and it's actually another good reason to go and see the superbikes when they come to Pakisa in September, October Yeah, like we time. needed another excuse. Uh, we're definitely going down there. We're mm. acting as marshals. Watch out for a feature around World Superbike time because we will be scooter marshals. And hopefully it won't be Chris we're picking up, because he was quite spectacular at Misano <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, and he was crawling off the track, wasn't, wasn't he? Wasn't he just? He was, he was on it again. The big motors have been on it, though. That's the impressive thing. But, yeah, bless him, he's a really fit lad. So, uh, well, he, he wasn't he was. immediately <laughs> after the crash, obviously. <laughs> but now he's a fit lad. And uh, you know what? Those guys think that even though it's been a development year for them, where they're basically sort of testing their waters, all the rules next year for World Superbike means the bikes will be equal, including the factory stuff, and they reckon they've got a proper chance of winning. Look, I mean, even though there's so little development time for them between the race weekends, they are still getting a whole year of race weekend development. Of course they are, And yeah. so they're going to start next year surely with an advantage. But, the, but what it does show, if you think about it, um, the basic bike must be so, so close to being perfect out of the box. And that's not as easy as it sounds, because if you think about the, uh, the Eric Buell racing effort, mm. whew, I mean, we never see them on telly, because they're so far off the pace. Yeah. So it is easy to get your stock bike just not quite there. So mm. impressive all round, really is. Oh, cool. I can't wait for September. After the break, we're going to have some new bike news, including these beauties, the Nortons. <laughs> 